Hi, everyone. Welcome to Unleashed with Kimberly. I'm your host, Kimberly Anderson. I am super excited today because I have the Robbie Motter, who is the queen diva, and I'm just going to bring her on so we can start our amazing conversation. Robbie, thank you so much for being with me today. Kimberly, I'm excited to be on your show. It is fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. So why don't you just start by telling everybody what it is you do? I mean, I know you personally, so I know that you have and wear many hats, but share with us all the things that you do. Well, my, my most favorite thing I do is that I am the founder and CEO of the Global Society for Female Entrepreneurs, a 501c3 whose mission is to empire, empower, inspire, mentor, educate women of all ages and all ethnic groups. And we do it through our networks, through Zoom events, through special events. And um, I just love all the women that are part of it and to help them grow in sort of greatness. All the women that do know you and follow you, we you're the we know you as the show up. What you're you're famous for saying and telling us to always show up and ask. Absolutely. That is that is my passion and has been my passion for years. Uh, to make women realize the power of showing up and asking. Um, and I just, can I share a quick story that was a show up story? Absolutely. Uh, this past weekend, um, O'Shea, who is a celebrity designer, came to spend some time with me. And we went to the links at Summerlee. And I introduced her to the, the woman who, they used to own the Forbidden City in Long Beach. They now are managing the restaurant and the catering for that facility. And I had it told her that O'Shea was coming, that she was a celebrity designer. And on the way, when I picked up O'Shea from San Diego, she said to me, you know, I just feel like I need to have another shop in the Inland Empire area because so many people are buying. And I thought, wow, that would be cool. She said somebody at Riverside would call her. And I said, well, maybe something will happen closer. So uh, when I introduced her to Gao, and she told Gao what she did and showed her some pictures, Gao took her by the hand, took her into another room, showed her space, and said, you and me be partners. You design the clothes. I'll bring in the, the material. We'll get the people to make. We'll bring in stuff, and we 50-50 partners. And that's what happened. Wow. Uh, that is a show. Uh, that, that was like about a 15-minute event. So that was, that was totally a show up. So O'Shea was just beside herself. So they're now working on bringing in stuff. And what a great creative. They have huge women that, uh, that play golf that come in there all the time. It's Plus, she has a lot of uh, friends that are Chinese that love nice clothes. So I and and there is just a beautiful space, and they're already figuring out how they can lay it out. And it, and then uh, Carl is going to actually get a, a, a like have a case built and put the perfume he's bringing in that he's designing in that same room. So another person is benefiting from it. That's awesome. That's really incredible, and it is all about showing up. As a matter of fact, you're doing a book about showing up and asking. Right. And, you know, I've been wanting to do this book for years, and I wanted to get – I could have probably written all the show-up stories myself, but <laughs> my passion was really having other women be of our members be part of it because then they could become a published author. So I every year I would say something. Everybody would say it's a great idea. But nobody ever came through. So mm -hmm. but this year I said, we're doing that book. And this is the deadline. I went out to 51 women and 44 responded. And the book is already going to lay out. And the book will be done. Uh, one of our members, Angela Cavani, designed the cover. She now has a publishing company. So she is going to publish the book. So we're, uh, we've already had it edited. And now it's in layout. And I'm very excited. That's exciting. It is exciting because you're allowing all these women, me included, to share about their show up stories and ask. And it's so important because women just, 
we will show up, but we don't even always ask. So it's well, the other, well, the other thing that's really great about the book. Some of the women, I, in reading every story, I learned so much about a lot of our members. But some of the women, for the first time in their lives, they shared that story. Mm. And I think that is just awesome. And the, they're all beautiful. There are no two stories alike. We even have one of my members is Florence LaRue, the lead singer with The Fifth Dimension. She wrote her story and was really interesting about hers was that she never wanted to be a singer. She, just, she wanted to be in movies. And so she was in beauty pageants. And at one pageant, she had to do some kind of talent. She didn't really have any talent other than singing in church. So she sang and the next it was history. Somebody heard her and she's been with the fifth dimension 50 years. Wow. Wow. Isn't it funny how things can happen and take you down a certain path? And another great story in the book was uh, Dorothy, Wo uh, Dorothy Woolens decided to do her, her story on a day with this COVID. All the things she got done in a day and never left her house or got dressed. And it was... Wow. It was pretty cute. She went to a funeral. She brought groceries. She helped her mother and dad in Florida. I mean, it was a, all these things that she got done. And she said, you know, had we not been locked up, she would have had, decide, had to decide which item she could do. But because we were home, she was able to do every one of them. And it was, it was pretty funny. That is funny. It's interesting how we, how we were able to just completely move online. Right. Everybody jumped online and there was a thing about um, all the stores had were they had tons and tons of pants, but all their tops were selling out because everybody, you know, everybody from the waist up was on camera and it didn't matter what you were wearing on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think a lot of us learned. I mean, I didn't even know what Zoom was till we started all this and I'm learning every day. But what's interesting, a lot of the women that are getting used to this, they like they want to stay online. I mean, we have some members that have said, even when we go back to live meetings, they would like us to do a couple Zoom a month so that they can just tune in. And we even had a woman on one of our shows, I'm not sure which network it was, which network it was, but she was she tuned in from Bermuda. Wow. And she's amazing. She actually is um a very distinguished, has a title from Germany, and she lives in Bermuda. So she wants to tune in to more of them. She's really nice. She's one of the um, uh, owners and also has a show on Big Media USA. That's very cool. That's amazing. That is really, really, um, yeah, it's global. I mean, when you go online, it becomes global. So... Oh. Share with us about what, I mean, you have an incredible history of not only helping women, but all the things that you've done. So share more about what it is that, you know, how you got to this point. Well, I think, I think we're all beta. Everything we do, we learn to get to the next step. You know, I started in the business world in, when I was 14. <laughs> I had lived in foster homes most of my life. But I got on a bus and went to San Francisco and got it lied about my age and I got a job with Levi Strauss, which is still there today. And and every job after that, I learned new things that got me a bigger job. And my last job in corporate America, I was in work before working in uh, Virginia, near Washington D.C. I worked in New York for five years. Um, but my last job, I had 800 people reporting to me. So since 1985, I've really been um, an entrepreneur. For 10 years, I spent helping small businesses, when I became an entrepreneur, uh, get government contracts because I know everything about how to do that since I was in charge of contracting with the government for those five years I was there. And then I did... You know, I just did other things. I did P I do PR for people. I work as a coach with people. I have a radio show. I'm getting ready to start a TV show on Big Media USA. Um, probably after the mid-July, something like that. I'm, um, TV is a little different than radio, so I want to make sure I know how to do that perfectly. So I'm there. You know, they have some people training us, so that's pretty cool. 
But yeah. the idea being that I'll be the the TV show. I want to interview people globally. Then mm -hmm. I can bring those global people into meet our girls with the network. So that'll help us even meet a lot more people. Like I was on a call the other day. One of uh, one of our members who also has the Woman of Global Change uh, was had a net, new network start start in Malaysia. So I was on that call with the Malaysia women, a Zoom. They are amazing. Uh, they are really doing business. And I think that would really be cool for our members to learn how other women in other countries do business. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then, you know, we have events coming up. Like, I'm very excited to be part of your event in October. So tell us a little bit about that. Well. Now you're interviewing me. I love it. So we, you know, one of the things that I love most, and and I think a lot of the women that follow you, Robbie, we all are trying to help others and create platforms where we can, you know, allow people to show up and ask and really shine in their their brilliance. And so I do a lot of this stuff with the um, helping women really know their power and their true selves with all my goddess things. And in October, I'm having the Unleash Your Inner Goddess retreat. And you were a part of, and I've spoken a few times on the show about my Unleash Your Inner Goddess virtual summit, where we discuss overcoming negative limiting beliefs and obstacles and all kinds of things where, you know, we've all gone through something and there is light at the end of the tunnel and we're not alone in all the things that we have to do in life and so one of the things that I've I've put on is different things for the goddess series and in October is the retreat and you have a couple of conferences coming up as well where you're constantly highlighting women and shining right um, you know, um, my conference October 7th at the link and we have nine speakers and eight entertainers it's all day long it includes continental breakfast, lunch, opportunity drawings, live auction, and it also includes a lot of networking, uh, a few vendors. Because last year I had more, and this year I'm not going to have as many uh, because I want to do more things where the, the members can interact. Mm -hmm. and, um, and last year it was such a blast. It ended at 5 30 and 11 30, they were still out on the patio dancing. <laughs> Uh, you never know, but the speakers are great, and the topics are great, and and uh, tickets are only a hundred dollars. That includes continental breakfast, lunch, everything for the whole day. And yeah. I'm excited about that, and I'm hoping that by October we'll be able to, you know, everybody will be able to come together in a group. I I was going to do our um, our awards, Lady in Blue awards this year. But with everything happening, I had to move it to January because the other thing is we're doing collaborations like collaborating with you, collaborating with Carl Wilson and all his uh, All Women Rock. It gives all of our women an opportunity to be part of all of that. And what was really amazing to me, um, as we get like the first one he's do and he's had to move the dates out several times because he was going to be earlier in the summer so we just moved him out again but the he usually has about between 50 and 59 awards and i'm happy to say that most of the awards coming up this year of the 59 we probably have 49 of our girls you wow. know um and all of them you know we, we we're pretty lucky but what was amazing to me is how many of our women who are doing such amazing things have never gotten an award so I'm yeah. happy that we have these collaborations where I have the collaboration with uh, with Carl and I also have it with uh, Michelle Berquist and her group and we have been able to give awards there. So I'm always looking where we can collaborate and our women can meet their women and we can nominate them and everybody's happy. But I was just amazed. Like I, um, I know last year when we did the one in Orange County, um, one of the one of our members who runs the HeartLink in Orange County told me she, she's been doing that for ten years, helping women. She told me she had never ever gotten an award. Wow! And one of our directors, Angel Cade, told me the other day she's never been 
gotten an award. Yeah, really? yeah. amazing. Yeah, amazing things. So I'm happy that we can do that. You know, we don't do what we do to win awards. Right. It's kind of nice to have your peers recognize you. And, and a lot of times I just hear about them because somebody nominates me and then all of a sudden, not like this uh, award in Florida, uh, Carl Wilson had nominated me. I never knew that existed. But then immediately I went to her. She was almost at the end. And I said, may I nominate 13 girls? And she said, yes. So I nominated 13 women. Now next year I'll nominate more, but I was happy to get the 13 in. Right. But you know, it's it's just the way life is that we we really can help each other. It's not there's not the comp we don't have competition. People buy from people they like. Right. So we can share and do and help everybody move forward. So that's my my thing. Yeah. And it gives us the the opportunity to acknowledge other women. And not only not only just about the award, but it's like recognizing and saying, hey, we see you. We see what you're doing in the community, in the world, and thank you. You know what's interesting? What's interesting, a lot of them are there, even though they're still doing the same thing and there's passion uh, is there to help others. Once they get an award, people look at them so differently. Like they move up a pedestal, and yet they're the same person doing the same thing. And I don't know why that is, but I've seen it myself that it, it does. Because it's it like does. not saying they're doing it. Somebody is coming back and honoring them for mm -hmm. doing what they do. Right. It just seems to elevate it or, you know, get that acknowledgement just seems to make it bigger, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I guess. And, you know, it's been interesting since we've been doing the uh, Zoom how everybody's jumping in and helping everybody, you know, because uh, some of our members are m uh, much better, you know, at it than others. Right. And, and we've been learning about sending people to rooms and, you know, I mean, it's kind of fun to be able to learn new things, I think. Right. Oh, absolutely. And you get to, you know, you're expanding, you get to do new things and then taking it all online puts you out of your comfort zone and you're not just now in a room with eight people. You can be in a, in a zoom call with a hundred people or 50 people or get, you know, those little rooms. Those are great. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, she put four people that uh, the, topic the speaker talked about, and then everybody had to go four in each room and discuss it more. And then she brought us all back and then she put on music, showed us how to do music. Again. I mean, it was amazing. That's very cool. Very cool. I haven't learned all that yet, though. <laughs> I haven't either, actually. <laughs> I've been in them, but I haven't actually done them myself. That's so funny. So what, Robbie, what would you say is one of the biggest things um, to help women get out of their comfort zone and ask for something that they want or well, need? I think one of the things they don't have is that somehow they think that people will look at them differently. They're, they're afraid of rejection. They really don't know what to ask for. So well, in, in order to prepare for the ask, you really got to break it down. You know, really make it fine-tuned so that when people hear your ask, they know exactly what you're looking for. So many times women think, and even, I guess, even men, I think it works for men too, that when they stand up and do their 30-second commercial, everybody in the room knows exactly what they need. They have no idea. Right. And so whatever it is, you need to spend. So at the end of doing your 30 second or 60, whatever you're doing, you can say, and how you can help me is because when you do it that way, you're not putting them on the spot. You're saying anybody, you know, that maybe could help me do this. It's just so much easier. And I've seen magic happen with so many times. And, and you just never know. Like a good example, uh, I how I got to see Gao again, who used to work at the Forbidden City. I didn't even know she was running this, but I was there one day because they had changed changed people working at the at the links, and I wanted to make sure everything was in place for October seventeenth. So I met with the the general manager, who's also the golf pro, and he said, "Oh, they were bringing in this couple who used to own a restaurant in Long Beach." 
And I said, well, I don't go to Long Beach Moms, but maybe I've heard of the restaurant. And they said, Forbidden City. I said, oh, my God. One of my net networks used to meet there till they sold the restaurant. Now we meet at the boathouse. Mm -hmm. But, this, I mean, there's another small world. Yeah. And, and so it was interesting because they knew lots of people in Long Beach, but they don't know anybody here. So I've been able to, in seeing them again, I've opened some doors for them to meet people here. And make connections. Yeah. I mean, that's what we can do. It is. You are the great connector. <laughs> well, but every day I meet new people. You never know where you're going to be and who you're going to meet. And I love that philosophy that you have about just showing up because you really do never know who you're going to meet or what you're going to see or something might, you know. What's going to happen? Yeah. yeah. yeah I always say showing up is like a treasure map. You never know what treasure you're going to find. And there's always treasures. So, you know, where people have marketing plans or they have strategic plans, they need to put this, put a show up plan together. You know, what are they trying to find? Where are those people showing up at? Who might, who do they know that might be showing up in those places? And that's, you know, kind of how, what they look at. So what would you say would be the best things they could put on their show up plan? Because a lot of people have never heard that. And I love, that's one of the things that you recommend for people because they do have a marketing plan. They do have all these other plans in place for their business and their life. And there isn't a show up plan. Well, the first thing to do is look at who your best customers are. Where are they showing up? That, that'll that give you a start of, because, you know, you, you, some, I, I've been in meetings where people say, my customer is anyone with, like, if they're hair, anyone with hair. Well, that's not true. Or my, it was a lot of times they'll say, my customer is anyone. Well, well, if you're selling Mercedes, your customer needs to have money. So you, that's what I'm saying. You need to kind of define it. And then you have to decide. Uh, there's many times you just show up to make friendships, and that's good. But if you're really showing up to do business, you need to be, you know, where are you showing up at? You need to look at that. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, so many times people walk in, and the first thing they do is they're giving everybody, you know, you need to build the relationship. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've said to somebody, how can I help you? And somebody have said to me, Nobody ever asked me that. Mm -hmm. They're trying to sell me something. Mm -hmm. Realize if you build that relationship and you listen and you, they may tell you something and you, maybe what you do could help solve the issue that they're having. Then you can come back with that. Or they may know someone. You know, I always think when you're trying to promote something, you don't go direct. You're not going direct to that person. You do a generalization. So mm -hmm. you're not putting them on the spot. If they're right. interested, fine. But they may be thinking, who do they know to connect you with? Right. And and the best way to connect people is to, I think, is to make the call and do the introduction and then let them go together and do whatever they can do together. That's how kind of how I like to do it. I'll say, I would like you to meet. And for both of them, here's your, both of their contact information. And, and then they can go, you know, do whatever. But one of the things happened, people don't, the follow-up is awful. People right. keep going to meetings and getting all these cards and then throwing them on their desk or in a, in a drawer, but they don't follow up. They just keep going and get more cards. And the answer is, you know, work the cards you have. You probably have so much that you can generate just from who you know already by right. working them right. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and even nowadays, not everybody wants to call to make introductions and doing it on an email or even in messenger on Facebook where you can connect people into a message works just as well. Yeah, I usually do, I do a text between two and that seems, yeah. to, you know, I'll text the person say, you know, I think you, sh you two have a lot in common, you should meet or there could be a collaboration between the two of you. And then I share the contact with both. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really important to, I mean, you of all people, you are able to connect so many together. And then the, like you said, the follow through and the follow up, making, creating that connection. Well, you know, as you know, sometimes I send out, 
a lot of opportunities. Some jump on, like there was one that HGTV, the, they were going to do a show of somebody who worked very hard last year that bought a home. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and I sent it out to all our members. One of our, I don't know if any other did it, but I know one of our members in Temecula did do it and she got picked. So yeah. when, what they will be doing is coming to her house and they have a, like a 35 million audience. Wow. Going to her house, TVing her house, having her tell the story of what kind of work she does in order that she made the money to buy this house. And they said it doesn't have to be your final house. The deal was it had to be a house she bought last year. Mm -hmm. and, and so I thought, you know, somebody, and, and there's a lot of other things that I send out to. And then when somebody gets picked for it, somebody's, I always hear, oh, yeah, I was going to do it. Well, just do it. Don't use right. the excuses. You know, you never know if you don't put it out there. Right. And that's so important with trusting yourself and having integrity with yourself, too. It's one of the things I talk about a lot, because if you just let it slide or make excuses, you're missing an opportunity. Whether or not, like if multiple people had tried for that HGTV thing, at least you tried and got your name in the pot. That's you right. know, whether or not you got it, at least you put it out there and you know it's creating opportunity and you never know you might get cho chosen for something different right somebody whatever yeah it, it giving your and, and giving yourself permission to do stuff get out of your comfort zone and stretch yourself a bit i know when i was in utah last year i really stepped out of my comfort zone that was the hardest thing i ever did because I've spoken to large groups as big as 10,000, but I've always been able to have like a little list of thing, key things or had some props I could show or statistics on uh, PowerPoint. When you do suit talks, you can't have anything. 12 right. minutes, totally memorized. That was hard. I, I don't think I've ever memorized anything in my life. Somebody, I, somebody just sent an email to me this morning and said she's, doing TED Talks and she thought I should do a TED Talk. I said, no, Sue Talk was the end. I'm not doing another one. No, but, yeah, but I mean, here you are, you, you just turned 84 in March and you did a Sue Talk. You completely got out of your comfort zone. And so it doing that never stops. And I love that about you because you, you're, you're like the energizer bunny. I always laugh that you have an, a, you have energy like 10 toddlers. <laughs> you just, you're always on the go and you're always coordinating and doing all these amazing things to help inspire other women. And it's, it's really remarkable. Well, I have a lot of, a lot of things to do. You know, before we had the shutdown, I was doing about 1800 miles a month. To go. <sighs> all of our networks you know i one day i might drive to san fernando to be there or to ventura and then drive home that night and so when people tell me they can't drive or they don't leave the city i think that's so ridiculous you're missing so much or some people don't even drive you know even though they have a car i mean to me you just have to make yourself do these things or you miss out you really do i mean one day we'll see you on the beach and another day we'll see you in the mountains. <laughs> another day you're having lunch somewhere, you know. And some days it's the same thing, and the whole day three different things on the same day. Yeah, I remember the time we had when we went out to uh, Santa Barbara and Ventura. Remember that was a beautiful day. Yep. And was, then, you know, if we didn't have that, we wouldn't be going to do those things. So it's kind right. of those things help us do things and get out of our comfort zone and reach out. If we didn't have them, we wouldn't do it. Absolutely. And it's good to have your sister girlfriends with you to pull you along and, and push you forward. And that's something that you are really amazing at is helping women get out of their comfort zone. I have heard so many, many stories of ladies that you've said, okay, you need to do this, you should do that. And, you know, let me connect you here. And people, these women are really coming into their absolute brilliance because they're following the guidance that you offer. Well, you know, mm -hmm. the, 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 the books that are in the chapters, they've never written before. Three of them, uh, one of them is on her third book. She's writing, she's, 
was in another chapter, plus our chapter, and she's writing her book. And also another one is writing her book. Never thought she would ever write a book because she's not a writer, but we showed her that if you don't write, you can transcribe, you can record it, and somebody will transcribe it into a book. So that's what she's doing. So you just, you know, there's always a way. So finding these little excuses, what you have to ask yourself, okay, if I can't do that, what are my other options? Mm -hmm. With Google, you could just type, if I don't like to write, but I want to do a book, what are my other options? And there'll be a whole bunch of options come up. Then you see which one fits you. Right. You know, it's just amazing. Or if yeah. you are trying to get some ideas and get some statistics, you can always find it. I mean, it's amazing. Back in my day, we didn't have all that. You know, I can even remember when we our cell phones were huge to fit in cars, you know. I remember that. I sold them so that I could get mine free. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> they were huge. You were like, hold on, my phone's ringing. Hello? <laughs> I remember I was doing deals in parking lots in Virginia so that I could, you know, people would meet me and I'd show them the phone and that was hysterical. I mean, if you look back, some of the things we've done in our life are jump, stepping stones for where we are today. Absolutely. Everything is. I was actually having that conversation with my son. He was promoted in his job and he had, I, and I had told him, do you remember when I told you all those things that you were doing in that um, do all those different jobs that you had helped you get to be able to do what you're able to do now and get that promotion. And he's like, yeah, you're right. And I'm like, it's about realizing that and, and that perception of what you gained in your lifetime and during that journey that allows you to be able to do what you're doing now. I, I would say that every day is another day in the little red schoolhouse of life. Every day we learn something. Oh, yeah. and, or else the other thing is if something isn't going right i always say to myself okay what I, what is the lesson i need to learn from this because there's always a lesson there and, is and you know you know i used to really sometimes worry about stuff until i got breast cancer and after that i decided that i would never worry about anything whatever I, if some a situation comes i'm going to do the best i can and that's all i can do and hope for the best. So I don't stress out about stuff anymore. Yeah, well, and it's not worth it. The stress, for one, isn't good for your body to begin with. And it's a wasted emotion. It's, you know, it's one thing to have maybe concern about something and then you figure ways to get through it and to the other side of it. But stressing about something, especially things that have happened in the past, Right. You know, I know people that are terrified of driving because they've gotten an accident 40 years ago. That's I'm like, that's <laughs> actually, a drunk driver hit me on the 76 freeway and I didn't walk for a year. And I, I, the, when I was doing my therapy, they said to me, you must drive. And that was back when the 76 was only a two lane. Mm -hmm. You must drive on two, two lanes. Otherwise, you'll never do it again. So I made myself do that. And I can tell you the first few times I did drive it, I could feel my heart just pounding. But I'm glad I did because I did not let that stand in the way. You know, and sometimes we have to do that. When something happens, we have to move forward. Um, I love this, uh, I don't, uh, don't remember the whole creed, but the optimist, optimist creed is, forget the mistakes of the past and press on to the greater achievements of the future. You cannot change the past. But you sure as you can, you have total access to what's going to happen in the future. Yep. Is that Optimus Prime from Transformers? No, it's Optimus Creed was a. Oh, okay. I think he said something similar. <laughs> yeah. No, that was um, just many years before I started doing NAFI. I was involved with the Optimus Club. I was the lieutenant. Oh, governor. okay. I was a lieutenant governor in Northern California, and. I won many, many awards. For, I built more Optimist Clubs than they ever did. And had I stayed in Northern California, I would have been the first Optimist Governor for the U.S. But when wow. I moved down to this area, it was still not ready for women. But up where I was living before, would have, you know, you had a better chance. But I've, you know, they flew me to headquarters many times, and I was part of 
doing some of the plans for the clubs. But then I started doing, you know, I wanted to work primarily with women. Right. Then I right. To doing that. And why? And tell us why you started focusing on women. What was it in your life that caused you to really focus on helping women? Well, when I was in, in my case, I never went to, you know, I had no education. Everything I've learned, I've learned in books and doing. And so I was always asking people who had a job above me to teach me so that I could move up. And I remember once I was working at the Optimist Club in Omaha, Nebraska, and I asked this woman if she would show me something. And she just looked at me and she said, I do not have time to teach you or any other woman. And that just kind of blew me away. Because, you know, in my corporate career, I saw a lot of that where women were not helping each other. And I made a pact that from that day on, everything I learned, I would spend the rest of my life sharing it with women. And that's what I've been doing. You know, it's, you know, I want to help them. I want mm -hmm. them to feel like, it's funny because I said this at one of the meetings, that I'm their cheerleader. So Angel K bought me my, I have my own cheerleader. You know, those things you pom pom pom. So I have my own pom poms now. That's and awesome. <laughs> I feel like I'm their, you know, I'm their cheerleader. They can call me anytime if they have an issue or they're not sure. I don't tell them what to do, but I help them evaluate, put it on paper, see what, where do you want to go? And is this going to help you get there? Or is this just another thing you're doing that isn't taking you anywhere? Right. So, you know, so that's kind of, how I do it. It's funny because most of the time a lot of them will call me, okay, I have this option and this option. I said, well, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but let's figure it out. What's best for you? Where are you going with this? What do you hope to bring get out of it? Mm -hmm. then, then you can make the decision. Yeah, and that's a great way to figure out the big decisions is to figure the pros and cons and how it's going to help you and if it feels right for you and move you forward. Yeah, you know, years ago, there were a lot of women that used to come to me and said they don't even know what they wanted to do. And that's when you had like the LA Times and the New York Times with their employment section. Paper was huge. It was like a whole section. So I used to tell them, get a piece of paper, go through the one ads. Don't look if you have all the, just cut out the ads that uh, that sort of excite you. Even if you're not qualified, mm -hmm. put on a piece of paper and then go back and write what in that ad really made you excited. And by the time you're done, you'll know what career you're supposed to do. And it really works. And many of them came back to me and said, wow, now I know my, where I'm going. And many of them are, have just zoomed up from that. That's awesome. Well, you also have this incredible ability to see somebody's brilliance within them, even if they haven't found it themselves. Yeah, I do. It's just a gift that I've been, I wish you could see it in me, but, but I can, I remember telling one of our members, you're a great writer. She said, I don't know how to write. I said, you're a great writer and um, you need to start writing columns. So she did. And she, now she's doing a book and she's done two chapters and she is a good writer. And the, the other thing I learned this year, putting the book together, even though we had an editor, people want their stories to be like you're sitting across the kitchen table having a conversation. They don't want them perfect. They want right. to, uh, I had one, we, we edited one and then the person was very, said no, if anybody read that, they wouldn't think it's coming from me. So we pulled it back to the original and just made sure commas and periods and spelling. And so that, and then I was talking to another person who does a lot of stuff, who took a class on that for, it was like a, whole day's class and she said that trainer who has been training for years said the same thing people need to write from their heart mm -hmm. because then the story is more real the same right. thing in speaking so many times people try to have everything perfect or all this powerpoint when you have all that nobody's looking at you they're looking at the powerpoint so your message is not getting across. Like I had one gal that was on my radio show who's a trainer, but she wrote down, she sent me the questions, but she wrote all the answers. And I could tell 
that she was reading me answers instead of just telling me the story. It was very mm -hmm. obvious. So the key thing, people, everybody has a story. So you speak from your heart. Then the people you're telling that story to will really feel it. They'll feel you. They'll feel your experience. So many times people think they have to have everything perfect. The only perfect person is God. You know, sometimes I've done something, sometimes, oh, that was, that's a, God's the only perfect person. So, you know, that's the way it is. Well, and how boring would life be if we were all perfect? Like, yeah, I wouldn't want to be perfect. No, and nobody is, and that's the beautiful thing. <laughs> sure, you know, but some people think they are, believe me. Mm -hmm. I've heard so many people say, so many people that have that perfection trait, they keep doing perfection, keep doing it, and they never get anything out. And when they finally get it so perfect and get it out, somebody's already copied them. So put yeah. it out there. Use the use the universe as your marketing research team. Pull it back in and adjust it, and put it back out again. Yeah. Oh, I like that. That's good. It's yeah. I mean, you just have to move forward imperfectly and be okay with it. And I'm one of those people that falls into that mild perfectionism where I, I want to know more, a little bit more how to, even starting this TV show, I'm like, okay, I need to know how to do these things so I can actually let it, make it run. But that's, but you it, doesn't have to be perfect. it doesn't have to be perfect. I just need to know how to do it. And as I keep going, I'll get a little bit better and better. But what I like about what you said is not only writing from your heart and speaking from your heart, and and the person that's reading it or hearing it it moves them differently too because it's not you're not just reading a story that's in proper and perfect english or whatever language or anything like that it's allowing the person to feel and we read a lot like that too how we would talk right you know and it makes a difference absolutely and i think that's the reason a lot of people try is they have to have a book that's perfect. You don't. There, you you tell your story. The reason I wanted to do this book is that I I think it's going to make more. When every when the people like already I have the Malaysia girls want to promote it in Malaysia. One of the gals that uh, wrote a uh, for, wrote a for one of the four. She actually only teaches top CEO women top of huge com companies she wants to promote it to her women so it's going to be and then some people i have in australia want to take it and promote it there so our book is going to go everywhere so the idea being as people read these chapters they're going to start showing up more and you know i, I was thinking that maybe every year we could do a book you know yeah absolutely that would be awesome and allowing people to read those stories, which is why I do my goddess work, my, my goddess stuff, the virtual summit, and even bringing, you know, this whole front part of this series with the TV shows, I'm bringing all those ladies back on and having a deeper conversation other than the 25 minute conversation we had in the, in the, um, within the virtual summit. But it's about sharing those stories and helping other people know that, hey, you're not alone. And you can do it. Yeah. yeah. Others could do a TV show. Others could do a radio show. You know, even if you just, I, I'm encouraging some, even if you just do it once a month. Right. Start there, you'll get knowledge. And then you. when I first started my radio show in 2004, I just did it once a month. Then I went to once a, once a week. And then doing this lockdown, I've been doing it every day. But now, because I'm going to do the TV show and we have networks coming back, probably going to go back to once or twice a week for the radio show and once a week for the TV show. I love that. And see, there you go. You have that's your show up plan. It's also your marketing and <laughs> plan too. But it they can blend together, which is another really uh, wise piece to. To put together in in your business is having your show up plan can be part of your marketing plan as well. Well, the reason I do the radio is it really focuses on my guests. Mm -hmm. The only thing I do is read their bio and ask them the questions. 
the rest of it. So I, when I tell them, when you're setting the questions, you know, a lot of times when you meet somebody, you really don't have the opportunity to really share everything you do. Well, this half hour show, you have a lot of time. So give yeah. your questions so that everything you want somebody to know gets out about you. Yeah. It's all about you. You know, it's not about me. It's about right. you. And that's the way I like doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a wonderful show. I've been on it. I've heard quite a few of them that you've done, and, and you have some amazing people on there, too. Yeah, and the yeah. show is going to be less. It's yeah. only 20 minutes because it goes on to all the other big channels, you know, mm -hmm. I um, YouTube and all of that. So it's right. just 20 minutes. So that you don't get a lot done in 20 minutes, but you have to be right. very precise on that. Right. So I want to ask you, and I know this story, but I love this story. And one of the things that I find really fun about the two of us is we went to the same high school <laughs> and we meet in California many, many years later. And, and that was in Honolulu, Hawaii. So you actually knew Henry J. Kaiser. Yes. I, Henry J. Kaiser owned the Hawaiian Village Hotel, which was a Western hotel at that time. And that was when Liz Taylor and Mike Todd were doing Around the World in 80 Days. So it was probably in the early 70s. And he was trying to build a round dome for Around the World in 80 Days. And somehow, I always got, I was very shy. People wouldn't think I'm the same person. I was, I started there doing payroll, and then I got promoted to be their first director of personnel, which is now HR. And um, I would always get in the elevator with him. And he was, he was 76 at the time. And he would look at me in. I, I, those engineers, he always had the engineers around him. And I was in one day and they would say, Mr. Kaiser, we just, there's no way we can do a round dome. And he looked at them and he said, I do not pay you to tell me there is no way. You will find a way. And then he looked at me because he knew my name. He said, Robbie, let this be a lesson to you. There is nothing impossible in the world. It, there is always a way to achieve it. I said, yes, Mr. Kaiser, and then I would get out of the elevator and run. And then uh, I'll tell you another funny story of that elevator. But then another time I was in the elevator with him, and he just looked at me and said, remember, life is like a main highway. Sometimes you're not on, the, things aren't going right. So if you put in your head that you're on the side road, and remember, all side roads come back to the main highway. So whenever, you know, being a single mom and all the things that I went through, in my life, whenever that happened, I would remember that. Oh, I'm on a dumb side road. And then we just like, I'm almost like I made a U-turn and go out. So another time, uh, we had Jane Russell and um, Esther Williams were staying at the hotel. And I always loved Jane Russell. But, you know, when you see him in the movies and you see him in person. So um, I'm in the elevator with one of, one of the staff people. And I said, wouldn't it be great? if Jane Russell would end up in the elevator with us. And this person is kicking me because she was in the elevator and I just didn't recognize. And of course, and of course Elvis stayed there while I was there when he was filming Blue Hawaii. And it was funny because I could look out my office and see his balcony and he would, he would jump up every once in a while and throw things into the pool and all these people would dive in the pool to get the belongings. And I got to meet some of his people. Um, but, you know, working there was a lot of fun back in those days. And then I left Hawaii and transferred to a Western hotel in Washington, D.C., the, May the Mayflower Hotel, because I wanted to come to the States. Right. Now I wish I'd always stayed there. A lot of people I hired are still there. Wow. Last, last time I was there. And then my aunt, my auntie Violet Malama, was the executive housekeeper for the Royal Hawaiian Hotel for 30 years. Wow. And my other aunt, um, her last name was Bishop. Was the, the um, she was the assistant, but they did the Royal Hawaiian and the Moana. So when I left Hawaii, I actually stayed at the Royal, and they used to have those those little cab like little houses on the property. And they're not there anymore. Right. But my aunt knew everybody. I mean, it was amazing. So when the year I went back for my eighty first birthday, I it was interesting because I had put on my board my vision board. Well, I, I couldn't find Maui, so I put Honolulu. And a few days later, my daughter called me, and she said, Mother, I want, I'm want i sending you to Hawaii. And I had Diamond Head. I had the Royal 
and Honolulu and American Airlines. So she said, you're going on American Airlines, you're staying at our Airbnb near Diamond Head, and I've arranged for you to have your, your birthday dinner at the Royal Hawaiian. <laughs> I said, why didn't I find Maui? <laughs> but vision boards are powerful. Everybody should do a vision board. I, every year I do a class for the girls, and it's really fun when they come back and they show me what has happened. Because when you have a visual, it's gonna, it makes it easier for it to happen. Yeah, it really does. It's interesting the to have that visual and be able to see it every day and think about it. That's what cause, ca starts causing you to really find it. Your brain finds a way to make that happen. And it, yeah. you know, we, what I tell them, go to both the magazines, get a board, and get the boards at the Dollar Tree. You know, one of those heavy ones, not the thin ones. Mm -hmm. And go through the magazine and don't even have a reason. Any picture that grabs you, just start tearing it out. And then after a while, you start cutting and you place it. And it's amazing the magic that happens with the boards. Yep. It's the, it's putting it out there and your mind starts really focusing on it. It's like when you go to buy a new car and you're like, okay, I want a X, Y, Z. Next thing you know, your brain is constantly seeing that particular vehicle. It's because it's searching for it for you and a way to make it happen. Yeah, one year, we had been, at, um, I wanted to go to, I always wanted to go to Italy and stay in a villa. So I had the villa and everything on my board. And about, oh, I guess a month after we did the, I did the board training, I was in Palm Springs and there were, it was a big conference that Dr. Sharon and we were all involved in. And then I said to some of the girls, don't, don't rent a place. A friend of mine had a condo. So we had 18 girls at that condo. Very good. We were sitting around. Everybody was having some champagne. And I just said, oh, wouldn't it be great to go to Italy? And then, of course, all the girls, yeah, I like Italian men and all that. And one of the ladies, we knew pretty much everybody there. But there was one gal that we did not know. She was the niece of one of the people there. And she said, you do not know this, but I used to live in Europe. Let me see what I could do. She came back three days later. She said, I have, I, I can put together seven days in Tuscany, airfare, food, drivers for $800. 35 of us signed up and went. And we, we had like four villas at this place. It was amazing. Every day. The drivers, we could go wherever we wanted, you know, some Florence or Venice or wherever. And then we would all come back at night and we'd eat and then, you know, have a party in whichever villa. It was amazing. That is amazing. I love it. And that, again, it's about, that's that was an ask, or really it was more of a declaration. <laughs> well, oh, wow. no, no way I thought it was going to happen. But it did, and it was beautiful. And, you know, it was a great experience. Yeah, so do a vision board, show up, ask for what you need and want. And like Mr. Henry J. Kaiser said to you, nothing's impossible. And I absolutely love that. Nothing is you know, you know, it may you may have to go many ways to get there, but there is the way. Right. You really want it. That's the key. Is it something you really want? And I really believe that whatever you do, you must have passion for. You will excel much faster if you have the passion. So many people, you know, like years ago, parents told their kids, you need to be this or that because of this and that. I, you know, you just, you need to be what you feel is right for you. And like when my kids were growing up, I just said, I'll work three jobs now, but I'm not supporting you when you're older. So you better find your passion and get a great job. And they all have great jobs. But, um, you know, but be what you really want to be. Don't be, and like the, my youngest daughter, she came back several times with different things. So when she told me that, I said, let me introduce you to people doing that. So she went and met with them and learned the good, bad, and the indifferent. Then she would change her mind and do, and then I would introduce her to that. And finally, she found what she really wanted to do, and she's excelled. They, you know, very. They all have excelled, and but that's what I did when they said something. I looked for people doing that so that they could hear. You know, some. I think everybody, if you go to work for a company, if you could go in for a couple of weeks, you really learn a lot about the company because a lot of times when you're doing an interview, 
you know, they're being wonderful and great, and that may not really be what the company's about. Right, yeah. Well, that's awesome that you were able to do that for your children. That's so great. You see so many people um, changing and shifting gears in their clear way into their 50s even, sometimes 60s, literally switching gears and going to do what they are passionate about now instead of doing it back then. And it's great, it's awesome for people to be able to do that and, and make that shift in their life. But how awesome would their life have been if they were doing that from the beginning? I remember I, my job. I'd always been in companies. I'd never been an entrepreneur. And even my children, they were so used to me going to work every day. And I became a you know marketing consultant. And and when I first quit the job, I couldn't have a client till after I quit because I knew I was going after people to do business with the government. It would have been a conflict. And they used to say to me, Mom, why don't you go get a regular job? <laughs> but I didn't listen to them because I knew that everything I did in corporate, I was always suggesting ideas and moving that I knew I could do it. Yeah. It, was, it was not easy in the beginning, but it did happen. Yeah, I didn't, it does. I didn't listen to them. So sometimes the negative thoughts in our brain, we're not, we think we're not good enough. Oh, why well, kid myself that I could accomplish that? So you need to put positive things in your brain. Read positive sayings every day to get your mind in the mood. Tell yourself how wonderful you are because you are. Yeah, and absolutely. So you start believing it, and you'll be have more positiveness in your life. Yeah, let other people bring you down because there are a lot of those out there that try to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Robbie, you have been absolutely amazing, and I love always having conversations with you. You're a wealth of information and wisdom. And you, here's Global Society of, for Female of Female Entrepreneurs (GSFE). If anybody's interested in becoming a member, you can reach out to Robbie. You can call or text her. This is her personal phone number. That's how amazing she is. She will take personal calls. Or you can email her right here at rmodder at aol.com. And if you go to Aphrodite Enterprises, Inc. through Facebook, I think I actually have it listed here, um, ask us questions. We will pop back in and answer any questions. Just tag Robbie or myself, and we will answer any further questions that you have. And thank you so much for being a part of the show, Unleashed with Kimberly. Thank you, it was wonderful, loved it.